In the middle of the desert, two helicopters drop Danica and three other vampires near a temple. Once inside, they remove a brick from the ground to reveal a secret passage and discover writings on a wall that are 4,000 years old, indicating the cradle of civilization. Suddenly a hole appears on the ground and a hand reaches to capture one of the vampires, bringing it down. The others immediately pull back to rescue him, only to discover his head is missing before the body catches on fire and turns to ashes. At that moment, a vicious creature crawls out of the hole. Meanwhile in the big city, a warehouse explodes when it's attacked by Blade, a vampire hunter. He's a vampire hybrid himself, which means he has superhuman abilities but he can still walk under the sun and withstand silver. However nobody believes his story about vampires killing people, and the police are waiting for him to make a mistake to catch him as a murderer. A few vampires try to escape from the warehouse, but Blade is incredibly fast and dodges their car before making it explode. Then he fights the other vampires hand to hand, turning them into ash in seconds. His best friend Whistler comes by in a truck to bring Blade his car, which he uses to chase after two vampires that are escaping on vehicles. They exchange a few shots on the road and Blade manages to run over one of the bikers, then he causes the other to fall through his window so he can beat him up and kill him. Suddenly the first vampire comes back and jumps on the car, but Blade quickly kills him too. There are two vampires left in a car ahead of him, so Blade turns the lights on his own car to burn them. One dies, but the other manages to hide. Next, Blade pushes their car with his to make it flip, and when he comes out, he discovers the remaining vampire has been staked with silver yet he hasn't turned to ash. The vampire reveals that he's just a human wearing fake fangs and this was a trap, Blade is currently being recorded by Danica to have proof he's killed an innocent civilian. Soon the cops are approaching, so Blade runs away. Afterward, Blade returns to his hideout and Whistler gives him a gift, a special inhaler so he can take the serum that keeps his thirst down more easily. Meanwhile Danica sends the video to the FBI before going home, where she discovers the creature that they brought from the temple is already fed on five people. Danica goes to check on him and sees he's taken a more humanoid form, using the name Drake. He thinks modern vampires are a shadow of the old power, but Danica wants him to guide the vampiric community and kill Blade. At the train station, a group of young vampires are hanging out when they see a lady with a baby waiting for the train alone. They immediately surround her and start beating her up, but when they take her baby, they discover it's a doll. Suddenly one of the vampires turns into ashes and the lady reveals to be Abigail, a vampire hunter. With great martial skills and specialized weapons that include a hidden knife in her shoe, she kills the vampires one by one until there's nothing left but their ashes. Sometime later, Whistler leaves the hideout to buy the newspaper, which is already talking about the Blade case. This allows the FBI to follow him, and in the middle of the night, the agents attack the hideout. After telling Blade to run, Whistler activates self-destruction on all his computers while opening fire on the agents, who manage to hurt him in the leg. Blade also encounters agents on his way out and fights them hand to hand while Whistler receives another shot. Finding himself cornered, he has no choice but to activate an explosive to destroy all their equipment, dying in the process. Blade jumps out of the building right before it blows up, but then he's surrounded by agents and has to surrender. Later at the police station, the FBI agents make fun of Blade for believing in vampires and accuse him of being a serial killer. Then they leave him in the hands of Dr. Vance, who proceeds with the mental examination. He treats Blade like a crazy person, asking dumb questions like the name of the president to check Blade's grasp on reality. Vance pronounces Blade psychotic and while the FBI and the cops argue over who should have custody of Blade, Vance injects him with tranquilizers. At that moment Blade realizes Vance is a familiar, meaning he's pledged himself to a vampire leader. He confirms this by showing his tattoo, and it's revealed that the FBI agent also has it. It's all been part of Danica's plan to get rid of Blade. At that moment, Danica and a few other vampires like Yarko arrive at the station pretending to be the transfer team. Blade is too weak to defend himself, but suddenly the window is shattered and one of the vampires is burned down. It's another vampire hunter called Hannibal, who immediately begins fighting the vampires and kills a few of them while Danica runs away. Yarko manages to push Hannibal against the wall, but the distraction allows Blade to use his inhaler and finally recover. He immediately kicks Yarko away and grabs his things before joining Hannibal in the corridors, where they start fighting a bunch of cops with the help of Abigail, who turns out to be Whistler's daughter. Soon they find themselves surrounded by both cops and vampires, so Blade escapes through the ceiling while Abigail uses a special bow to open their way through the vampire group. The duo manages to make it outside and watch Blade jumping out the window, explaining he went back for his sword. Outside there are cops waiting for them too, but suddenly Dex appears to pick them up. The trio escapes in a van only to notice Yarko running after them, so Abigail shoots him with an arrow to make him fall. Moments later, Blade is taken to a new hideout and learns that Abigail formed her own vampire hunter team called the Night Stalkers thanks to everything she learned from her dad. The other members are the weaponry designer Hedges, blind scientist Summerfield, and her young daughter Zoe. In fact it was Summerfield who designed Blade's new inhaler, and Whistler had wanted Blade to work with them. Hannibal reveals he used to be a vampire and Danica's pet until Abigail rescued him and Summerfield cured him, but Blade isn't interested because they're amateurs and he sees them as kids. Then the group shows Blade some old relics, 
revealing that the legend of Dracula is real and he's been around for 7,000 years. He's used different names through time, and now he's the guy Danica calls Drake. Dracula is the original vampire and he's so powerful that the sun doesn't affect him. In fact while the team discusses this, Drake goes out during the day to learn more about modern society. Eventually he makes it to a goth store and is disgusted by all the dumb Dracula merchandising, which includes a vampire adult toy. Offended, he decides to throw one of the clerks out of the window and feed on the other one. Back to the team, Summerfield reveals she's been working on a biological weapon that she calls Daystar, a virus that specifically targets vampires. Unfortunately, the virus lethality is still spotty so they need better DNA to work with. Dracula's blood is still pure and unaffected by generations of mutation, so they'll need a sample of it. To reach Drake, Blade thinks they should go through the familiars first. Before they leave, Hedge hands them a bunch of cool new weapons, including a UV arc. The team starts visiting all sorts of familiars, which they find by following the tattoo. They beat them all up but none of them have any useful information. After lots of pointless fights, the trio is dangling a familiar off the side of a bridge when the guy suddenly gets a call from Vance. Finally having a name, they let the familiar fall to his death and go to Vance's office, beating up even more guards on every single floor. Many more humans are knocked out until they find Vance, but before they can talk, Hannibal notices the real Vance is dead behind a desk. The Vance in front of them is Drake, who quickly changes forms and dodges Abigail's shot to capture Hannibal. After stabbing Hannibal, Drake jumps out of the window and Blade immediately follows him. They run through the city until they break into a building and after destroying several apartments, they make it to the roof, where Blade discovers Drake has kidnapped a baby. Drake confirms he's been brought back because the other vampires want to be able to walk in the sun too, then he throws the baby, disappearing while Blade catches the child. Meanwhile Abigail heals Hannibal's wound and tells him not to give up, but when they return to the hideout, she can't stop being upset over the loss of her dad. Drake goes back to Danica and decides to feed on her. Sometime later, Summerfield informs the team that she has located the vampire's laboratory at Biomedical Enterprises. She also downloaded a copy of their recent purchases, which include curious things like bone marrow growth supplements and genetic sequencing enzymes. Blade and Abigail decide to go investigate and make it to a warehouse in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly the FBI agent arrives with his vampire leader, so Blade immediately kills her and forces the agent to share answers. The guy opens the building and reveals hundreds of humans in stasis, all wired up as continuous blood donors. This is the vampire's final solution. Instead of hunting blood like wild animals, the vampires have created a blood farming facility. A furious blade shoots the agent and then forces the computer technician to shut down the facility, which kills all the sleeping humans. At the hideout, the rest of the team is relaxing in different ways and doesn't notice Whistler enter the building. He approaches Hannibal, who is confused until Whistler grabs his face and he realizes this is actually Drake. Seconds later, Summerfield hears a noise and goes to investigate only to find a ball covered in blood. She tells Zoe to hide while she keeps investigating, not realizing she's walking right next to Dex's and Hedge's bodies. Suddenly Drake finds her, and in her hiding spot, Zoe hears her mom scream. She wonders if it's safe to come out, but suddenly she finds her way blocked by Drake. Moments later, Blade and Abigail come back to find Hedges, Dex, and Summerfield all dead, but Hannibal and Zoe are missing. Summerfield's body has been hanged up to imitate Jesus and Drake has left a threatening message with her blood. In the meantime, Hannibal wakes up chained to the floor in the vampire's lair. There's a cute little Pomeranian dog licking his face, only to suddenly reveal a monstrous mouth. Danica and Yarko come in and confirm they've been making vampire dogs before they start hitting Hannibal, asking him for Blade's plans. When Hannibal refuses to talk, Danica threatens to turn him into a vampire again and leave him thirsty until he has no choice but to feed on Zoe. Back to Abigail, she's dealing with her grief by practicing her archery, showing off all perfect shots. Blade suddenly senses a presence in the building, it's Calder, another member of the team. He has a video message Summerfield sent before getting killed in which she explains she developed a workable strain of the Daystar virus, which is now in possession of Calder. If they inject it into Drake, it'll mix with his blood and kill every vampire in the area. However they aren't sure how it'll affect Blade because he's a hybrid. On this short notice, Calder has managed to make only one projectile with the Daystar virus, so Abigail will have to make it count. Since all the team members have a tracker implanted in their bodies for emergencies like this, Abigail is able to easily find Hannibal's location. She and Blade grab as many weapons as they can carry and take off. At the vampire's lair, the monsters continue to beat Hannibal up because he still refuses to talk. Suddenly they start coughing ashes because Abigail has put liquid silver in the air conditioning system. Then Blade drops down through the skylight and starts fighting the vampires while Abigail rescues Hannibal. Blade is soon surrounded by guards too, but he has no trouble getting them out of his way and keeps advancing to fight more vampires, burning them down with the special weapons. Abigail joins the fight too and starts beating down more guards while looking for Zoe. After she ends up killing a few vampires as well, she finally finds Zoe. A vampire takes the chance to grab her from behind, but Abigail uses the UV arc to destroy him. Meanwhile Hannibal gets his things back and tries to join the battle, 
only to come across a bunch of vampire dogs. He immediately runs away and at the last second makes a jump, tricking the dogs into jumping out of the window. However, he steps back and accidentally falls back into his cell, where Yarko finds him and starts fighting him hand to hand. At first it seems Hannibal is at a disadvantage, but when Yarko is about to bite him, Hannibal puts an explosive in his mouth and burns him down. Afterward Blade finds Drake and they start fighting with swords. They're both very skilled warriors and the fight goes on without either of them managing to land a hit. Some of the vampires want to shoot Blade to help their master, but Abigail appears to kill them with her bow. Soon Danica appears with a gun too, but Hannibal tackles her to stop her, which triggers a fight with her. Suddenly Blade kicks Drake through a window, so after a long jump, both men drop their swords and start fighting hand to hand. Drake drops Blade onto the ground with great strength before starting to transform into his monstrous form. Blade tries to retaliate with a few kicks and punches, but Drake is too strong and keeps throwing him away. When Drake retrieves his sword and is ready to kill Blade, Abigail finally shoots the virus arrow, but unfortunately Drake catches it and drops it. Abigail continues to distract Drake with normal arrows while Blade grabs the virus to finally inject Drake with it. Drake roars in pain as the virus combines itself with his blood and spouts out of his body to then kill every single vampire in the building, including Danica. As all the vampires slowly turn to ash, Drake regains his human form and compliments Blade for fighting with honor before dying. Suddenly, dozens of FBI agents go into the building, only to find everything destroyed and no bodies except Blades. Sometime later, the FBI's science division is preparing to perform an autopsy on Blade, but he suddenly wakes up. As he begins knocking everyone down, it's explained that the virus didn't kill Blade because the human half of his heart didn't stop beating, it only slowed down, causing him to enter into a comatose state until his body was ready to fight again. Blade escapes on a bike, ready to start a new life. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.